So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, good afternoon, uh, dear students. So I would like to tell you the story of the virtual world. And uh, the virtual world is increasingly becoming more sophisticated, extremely scientific, and, and it can act as an enabler to make the physical world, the world that all of us live in, a better place to live. Now, let's, let's look at a few examples. Uh, you see the aircraft on the top. And, and today, leveraging the virtual world, you could design an aircraft, you could create a factory, which is the replica of the real factory with robots, with machines, with human, and you can actually digitally manufacture the aircraft. And you could take off probably with a digital pilot and digital passenger to, to understand whether it is delivering the kind of passenger experience that you want the aircraft to deliver. Now, what's very interesting is that even bridges, when you look at a bridge, you could design a bridge in the virtual world. You could virtually construct it. Look at how much time do you take to construct the bridge. And if you take two years and, and you want to do it in a year and a half, you could do simulation to understand how can you really make it happen in a year and a half time as against two years. You could look at how much does it cost. You could even understand if you are uh, constructing the bridge in an earthquake-prone zone, you can probably shake the bridge with an earthquake. You could probably shake the bridge with a tsunami and, and see how it, how it reacts. You see the train there, top of the bridge, right? This train can actually be designed in the virtual world digitally, you can create the factory. Like we got factories in uh, Varanasi and uh, Chennai. You can actually create a digital factory, manufacture the trains digitally, and put them on a digital track to understand the performance. What's going to happen to your train when it comes out of the railway track? If you see the next example, which is this ship. It's a, it's a luxurious ship. And uh, uh, the ship is having more than 10 million components. And ships today, they got both mechanical, electrical, uh, uh, and they got software. Uh, it, it has got almost 30,000 electronic sensors. So you could design the ship virtually in a virtual world. You could virtually construct it, and you could put that ship on a digital sea, and she could go for sailing. And you can understand the behavior and the performance before you physically make it, because you know that the cost of making a mistake in the physical world is very high, right? And, and there, are, there are several such interesting examples in, in diverse industry. And I would like to share with you now uh, that if you look at our country, there are large number of infrastructure projects going on, not only in India, in all emerging economies and even in developed countries. You've got projects which are uh, capital-intensive, multi-billion dollar infrastructure or planned construction. You can design a plant. You can virtually construct a plant. You can simulate the behavior of the plant. And if you're going to set up the plant in an area which is cyclone prone, you can actually shake your plan with a cyclone to understand in the event of that natural calamity, what's going to happen to your plan, and you can take corrective measure. You can, you can do a complete digital mock-up of the plan, and if you are not happy seeing it in the computer, you say nothing like seeing it in the real life, you can leverage virtual reality and augmented reality, and you can see it in front of you. Now, friends, I wanted to share with you that uh, three things which are becoming extremely interesting. One is the customer's expectation of having products which are personalized. So gone are those days when people spoke about mass production. There's a lot of 
focus on mass customization. People are actually talking about not just buying product and services because people have realized that we live in the age of experience and therefore we got to be delivering not just product and services but also unique experiences to end consumers. Uh, you find many, many multinational companies, both Indian and MNCs, they are today designing products and design is done in a collaborative environment. People sitting in different parts of the world, right? Products are manufactured again in different parts of the world. They are sold where it makes the best sense. And, and you also find that customers experience regarding frequency at which you roll out new model. The frequency at which you roll out variants of new model has actually increased. So I think the plant of the future is going to be more compact. They are going to be more economical. They are going to be more ecological and, and they are expected to be more flexible and agile. Only then you can deliver products which are personalized. Friends, I would like to share with you uh, an example. And, uh, and today, for example, when you talk about car, you could design a car in a scientific virtual 3D platform. After designing it, you can actually manufacture it in a digital factory. And you can put that digital car on a digital road with what you call as passengers and see what happens when the car crashes. And the difference between the physical world and the digital world has actually reduced because of science and because of augmented and virtual reality. Uh, you could crash a car before you even physically make the first car and you could crash it and you could create different scenarios and you could understand what happens to the car, right? What happens to the passenger who is sitting in the car, right? Which part of the body of the passenger gets impacted, right? What happens to your airbag? Does it really open up? If it doesn't open up, then it means you, know, you have a defect in the design or in manufacturing and you got to really correct it. Now friends, I wanted to share with you not only cars, right? Even two wheelers, right? When you, 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 could, you could talk about, you know, extreme customization. You could actually get connected with the potential end user of the bike and involve him what kind of bike he wants. You could make him sit on that digital bike and experience it. So I think products are becoming extremely interesting because of both the virtual and the digital world. Now, let me give you the example from a different industry. Imagine you have a digital world, right? You have a virtual world where you have a digital human. Imagine you are inducing digital cancerous tissue to simulate a digital cancer patient to study the propagation, the phenomenon of propagation of cancer comparing it with a physical cancer patient. Imagine inducing a digital drug into the digital patient to understand, can you really stop the propagation? And you could do it before even the drug is manufactured. After all, a drug is a formula. And I think days are not far off where you're going to see this personalized uh, medical treatment making huge contribution right? Concepts like virtual drug program or in silico drug design is becoming increasingly interesting. Manufacturing a drug virtually, right? Understanding the intricacies related to actual manufacturing of the drug, which you have validated and experimented and studied in the virtual environment about the impact and benefit. Think about a person having, you know, loss of hair, right and 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 it is because of let's say a, a a gene that the person has inherited from the parents now you could think of and and that gene would start doing stuff which is not good for your hair right would would probably be expressed into a protein 
which will be responsible for your hair loss. You can then think of discovering a molecule which will modulate and give lessons to that protein such that the deceased protein does not misbehave and you don't lose hair. Uh, friends, I would like to share with you that learning is another area, I think education, right? The experiential learning is going to be more and more important. You will find kids in the school, engineers in the colleges, students in the undergrad and, and postgrad will be having an environment where they can experience it. Learning about a factory and a product versus, right, using augmented and virtual reality, looking at a real factory as if it's a real factory and understanding, interacting, learning. I think learning can become a, a much bigger fun than how it is in, in, in many institutions. Now, I'd like to share with you that uh, urbanization is another area where you will find virtualization being very, very interesting. So you could Google and, and learn about a project called Virtual Singapore. Now, in the context of our country where today only 30% of the people live in urban areas, you are going to see proliferation of people in urban uh, cities. You will see people getting migrated from villages to the cities. And, and, and you will find that the impact of creating a virtual city, which is a replica of a current city that right now we are in Gurgaon, or let's say the city of Delhi, which happens to be one of the most polluted cities of the world, or creating a virtual satellite city, or creating a completely new city, right? And, and, and defining all the utilities like energy system, water system, right? Even simulating what's going to happen if you have an earthquake, right? What's going to happen to your city if you have a flood? We have seen like the city of Chennai had a, had a flood. Now, we know that there is going to be an acute shortage of water, for example, right? And as far as India is concerned, you can see on the map that India is going to be one of the most adversely impacted countries of the world. Now, how do you define all this as subsystem? Right, water supply as a subsystem, energy access as a subsystem, right? Infrastructure as a subsystem. How do you process the waste as a subsystem? And, and, and treating city as a mother of many, many subsystems, simulating the behavior before you implement a policy, right? How can you run it in the virtual city to understand the impact you are going to have in the physical city? I think is going to be something very, very interesting. Friends, I would like to share with you that, uh, uh, you know, we know that in our country there are many zones which are earthquake prone. I think it will be very important when you build a city or you build a building to really understand what's going to happen if you have an earthquake. What's going to happen if you have a flood? What's going to happen if you have a fire accident? Will the people be able to really come out? Uh, so I think the virtual world is not only going to extend the physical world, it is going to help us in improving the quality of life in the physical world. It is going to make the physical world much more sustainable, right? And you can have insights that you may think almost impossible to experience in the physical world. So I think uh, the virtual world can act as a powerful enabler to improve the physical world. And, uh, and the gap between what you experience in the virtual world versus what you experience in the physical world is actually reducing. It's because of the algorithm, because of the science, because of the physics. People today, scientists and people who work in R&D, they are more confident in defining models in the virtual world. They are making models which are very, very accurate. They are defining models which are multi-physics, non-linear, right? They are removing assumptions. They are trying to make models which are very close to the physical world, so that when you get your output 
in the physical world, right? You know that what you are going to experience in the physical world versus the virtual world, gaps are very, very uh, uh, nominal, minimal. So science is actually making the output of these two worlds closer and closer. And virtual world is also helping us to have better insight about what's likely to happen in the physical world. Uh, I think if we really uh, leverage science, if we leverage technology, if we leverage the virtual world uh, appropriately, we can convert our physical world, our planet, a much better place to live in, a much more sustainable. Thank you.